Hi everyone, this is Joe Massaro with Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club. And if this is the first time you're joining us, we are a book club that meets once a month. And not only do we read a book, but we get to also meet the author. And this, the last few months have been kind of different because of COVID-19. Uh, we are going forth with interviewing authors and um, we're just not doing it with, a, with an audience. And so we thank God for the opportunity to still be with you. We have a very special guest today, Lauren Cruz, who wrote this incredible book. Let me pop, pop it up here. I want to make sure I do it as often as I can. Strength of a Woman, Why You Are Proverb 31. Incredible book. There's also a devotional with it, which I have as well, which I love. I read it every day. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, where do you live? I live in Jacksonville, Florida. You're in Florida, right. Okay, so I have a lot of family down there. I have a lot of family in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. how's, how's the weather been down there? It's actually been beautiful. It's usually really hot by now, and we have had a real spring. It's uncommon. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're full of rain right now here. I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana, so yeah. a little bit of rain. <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you share a little bit about uh, who you are? I mean, sometimes I read something about you, but I just thought it would might be nicer for you to just share a little bit about who you are and um, maybe a little bit about uh, your writing. Okay. Uh, Lauren Cruz. Hi. <laughs> um, I am a wife and a mama. I have three grown kids. And my husband and I have been married, I think, 30 years this year. Um, I have a Master's of Divinity from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. I got that later in life. I didn't start that until I was in my 40s. And so um, I worked on that. And um, through that, I really got interested in um, you know, the details of the languages of the Bible. I've always had an interest in um, our Jewish roots. Um, I am a Christian. I was brought up in a Christian home, but we had a lot of Jewish influences. Uh, we actually celebrated Passover. And from that, um, I've always had an interest in the, you know, our Jewish roots as Christians. And so when a friend told me one time that the Proverbs 31 passage was actually an acrostic poem of the Hebrew language, um, got a little interested, you know, those nerdy word juices <laughs> started going and um, I like research. Um, I'm actually a, a English teacher. I teach high school seniors and so the whole writing process, um, I enjoy that. I enjoy teaching it. Um, oh, so when I started researching, I really liked it. How that writing was or how that being a teacher was in the COVID-19. It, it was tricky. Um, Thankfully, I have seniors, and so we've met a lot of our graduation requirements. And so, actually, during this period, we got to do fun things. You know, I we we were reading stories and poetry and things that you know they they weren't worried about being on a state test or the ACT or anything. So, we actually got to enjoy some um, more interesting aspects of English. I'm sure it'll be definitely a year that they will never forget. It's sad. I've made some good friends with my students this year. Um, they, they tend to text me and call me very late at night. <laughs> like These are not my normal business hours, but it's okay. They're, they're sweet kids and I don't mind helping them. So I'm glad to hear from them. <laughs> I have a couple of grandchildren back in New York who are seniors and um, it's definitely been a challenge. It is, it is. Lots of yeah, I have a, 140 seniors. <laughs> wow. wow, that's a lot. So you're writing, um, is this the first time you've written or have you done other things? No, and actually I never really had aspirations to be a, a specifically an author. I like writing curriculum. I like writing um, Bible studies. I have taught a lot of Bible studies. I, I like doing the research um, part of it. And the book actually started as a Bible study. I had a group of um, 10 or 12 ladies that met um, every Tuesday night for more than a year. And they, uh, they were my beta readers. They read through this project first. And when it was initially written, it was a Bible study. And so they helped me um, write the questions. And, you know, they, they liked or didn't like certain words and helped me tweak everything. And uh, they were a big part of writing it. So I, I got to practice on them. So I think you had said at some point I read that you had asked women 
uh, when Proverbs 31 came into mind, that woman, what they thought of it. So did you get a variety of answers or were they kind of the same or what, what did you find? Yeah, it, it really, a variety um, with a common theme. <laughs> um, most ladies said that, you know, she is a lot like my mom or my grandma, but I have a hard time meeting her expectations. Um, a few people said, there's just no way I can compete with her. She's perfect. Few people said, you know, I read it a few times and I don't really spend a lot of time in that part of the Bible because um, I can't really relate to her. I'm single or I've never had children or I'm divorced. Um, and so she doesn't seem to apply to me as much. So I heard, I heard a lot of different, um, you know, definitions and ideas about her. And, you know, of course, we've heard it taught in church, you know, what we're to expect about this lady. Um, but when you look at it through the uh, original Hebrew language and as an acrostic poem, because it's actually a poem of the Hebrew alphabet, that means um, every verse starts with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So when we know that, we can start to see some really interesting teachings about this lady that we've not really heard about. You know, you also, I believe I read that it, it actually holds a military theme, which totally It does. Yes. Do you want to explain that a little bit for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the fir very first verse, it starts out, who can find a virtuous woman? Um, she's worth more than rubies. Well, we've translated it into English. And it's not that the translation is wrong, but when we pick words, um, those words have to mean a lot to our culture. You know, we have to be able to relate to them. So when King James um, put this Bible into English the very first time, he came up against this word chayil in Hebrew. And that word in the Bible always references um, strength uh, in the military. It's, it's always used to describe a warrior or the army. Well, that word chayil, you know, in King James time is the word strong, okay? But we've translated it, King James translated it into uh, virtuous or excellent. So think about women in our place and culture back in that time period. You know, we couldn't have a lot of strong women. We could have virtuous women. We could have excellent women. We could have women of valor, you know, because valor might mean us something a little different. But we couldn't have strong women. And so the word was tweaked. It, it's similar, but um, it fit the culture of that time. But when it was originally written in Hebrew, it starts out a woman of strength. Who can find? Because her value is worth more than rubies, and actually, it's worth more than little red, um, little red pieces of coral. That that word that we've translated as uh, rubies or jewels is actually the word coral, a red piece of coral. And um, in the book, I kind of talk a little bit about what that struck me as. You know, what those little red droplets to me remind me of. So there's references to this strong woman. Strength is referred to more than seven times throughout the passage, different um, words of strength. Mm -hmm. um, there's references to the gains of um, war, the spoils of war, girding yourself. One of the letters represents um, the idea of being a watchman on the wall so you're not carried away into captivity. Um, there's words about like leaning in and inspecting things like an officer would lean in and inspect their troops. And so there's a lot of references to uh, the military actions of this warrior lady. So I, I know like I've read other books on the proverb or you read articles on Proverbs 31. What, so you, you kind of explained a little bit about the next question I'm going to ask you, but what makes this different than another book that I might yeah, so what I did is I tried to give you um, an introduction to the letter, because like I said, every verse starts with a different letter in Hebrew. And in Hebrew, um, the letters don't just have a sound. You know, we think of our ABC and we just think of the sounds that they make. But in Hebrew, there's actually word pictures behind it. And um, because it's a, uh, an acrostic poem, um, the, the Jewish readers would spend a lot of time memorizing. If you think of a little boy when they're bar mitzvahed at 13 years old, basically what they're doing is they're standing up and they're reciting what they have memorized. And so um, the Jewish writers would do a lot to help those readers memorize Torah because we didn't have books. We didn't have books back then. They had to memorize everything. And so 
these um, Hebrew letters have an image. And so the reader might go, hmm, Olive. Olive is an ox. Who can find a virtuous woman? Well, I'm ox. Ox are yoked together and I have to yoke myself into marriage. And there would be a little bit of a trigger there. So all the letters trigger something in the verse that is um, similar. Uh, another way it's different is I've included the stories of some very unlikely Proverbs 31 ladies. You know, when we think of Proverbs 31, we think of her being just the perfect example of biblical womanhood. Well, some of us have gone through some really hard times, and we often think that that disqualifies us from being a Proverbs 31 woman. And I wanted you to meet these ladies because I wanted you to hear their stories and how they represent those verses and those letters and from their incredibly difficult times of life, they have become godly Proverbs 31 women and they've depended on the strength of God to get them through it. So it's different. Yeah. I, I, I was fascinated by it. I, you, talk about your, you talk about your mom in there, so maybe you could share a little bit about her. Yeah, um, my mom is um, a little unique in her situation. Um, the verse that I went um, with her begins with the letter Lamed, which is L, letter L, um, and it represents a, um, a long goad. If you think about um, people that prod animals, you know, if you have two oxen that are yoked together, you might prod them and, and goad them along the, the trail, and it represents teaching and training. And so my mom has dealt with a chronic illness all of her life, um, the, really the last almost 30 years. Um, she's been homebound. You know, we, we talk about being socially isolated now, but that's been 30 years of her life. Um, she's very, very sensitive to chemicals and um, products that we take for granted on a daily basis just make her incredibly sick. And so she can't be near them, near anything. Well, She's not one to sit still. <laughs> and so she has, um, she has still become a useful person in the kingdom of God. Um, she teaches Bible study um, on the phone. She does conference calls. And now that she's starting to get pretty savvy with Zoom, she's able to do Zoom meetings and attend things. And she's a mentor at her church. And she is a leader and a teacher. Um, even isolated at her home. And so she has not allowed, um, you know, this social distancing and social isolation. Um, it's been inconvenient for us, and it's been a little bit of a challenge for us to navigate, but she's a pro. She's a master. And she definitely is a Proverbs 31 woman, um, even though she is divorced and single and stuck at home, um, she is still useful to the kingdom of God, and she absolutely takes advantage of that. I just love her story. <laughs> oh, that's great. I really do. I just love the fact, you know, obviously it's not easy to be home the way she is and for so long. Yeah. She did not give up, you know, and um, that there was still a journey for her, still something that God had called her to do. Exactly. You know, you were talking about we all have stories, and we have talked before today, and I had shared a couple of things about my 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 life, and I always thought of a Proverbs 31 woman as certainly not myself, and and then I began to think, uh, read about Mary Magdalene, and yes. and what do we know about her really? Mm -hmm. Not a lot. Yeah. And but who was the first one that went to the tomb? on the day that exactly but you know what think about um the different women that encountered jesus mm -hmm. and and how they were used in the kingdom of god do you know the very first woman that became a gentile witness was the samaritan woman yep. um he met her at the well and she's really got a bad rap and she's the first person that he revealed himself as messiah to and she's the first person that went and shared, I met the Messiah, come meet him. And so, um, you know, when, we've, when we look at her, she's a woman of shame. And yet she and Mary Magdala, because Mary Magdala had a rough background, you know, being demon possessed. 
neither of them were disqualified. And in fact, they had a place of honor in um, building the kingdom. Absolutely. So, very important. The Samaritan woman, we know her just as that. Yeah. Samaritan woman. Yeah. So I just, I love to learn about women of the Bible and I just find it fascinating, um, especially when I meet, you know, everyday women today and someone like your mom who's yeah. just doing so much. I just, um, I'm just uh, excited to get to know her a little bit better. She'll be, she'll be honored. <laughs> so some may think this is more of like an academic book, but it's really, it, it's really not. I mean, why don't you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I, when I started out, it was very academic, and um, it took me a while to get it published. I really felt like I needed to have this published um, and not just go through a self-publishing avenue. Um, I needed to learn. I needed to learn how to be an author, and I needed to learn, you know, the process. And, and a lot of the comments were, you need to make this more of a story. It needs to be more relatable. You know, I, I personally enjoy those, those academic books, you know, but that is not a huge market. And so um, I had to really uh, learn how to incorporate stories into this. And so that's why I have the stories of the different ladies, um, 22 Hebrew letters, and I gave 20 stories. And so I have stories of women who you know, their husbands had affairs and how did they deal with that? Um, you know, our society is quick to divorce, but I have the stories of women who stuck it out despite um, naysayers and they, they're doing fine. I have stories of women who have been married multiple times. How can I be a Proverbs 31? I've had five husbands, you know, I have the stories of two women who lost their husbands. Um, how can I be a Proverbs 31 woman? I'm a widow. Um, I have a story of a woman who actually chose not to have children. It was a hard, conscious choice. She wavered throughout her life, but stuck to it. How can she be a Proverbs 31 woman? That passage is nothing about talking how she submits to her husband and, and takes care of her children. So. How in the world can those apply? And, and I, wanted a, I wanted everyday women um, because more and more those are becoming our stories. Um, you know, how can we relate to this woman um, and still consider ourselves strong and still consider ourselves worthy of God's use? And, and I wanted ladies to come away from the book knowing that you know, we're not disqualified. Um, don't allow the predefined ideas of Proverbs 31 to define who we are as women of God. So it really speaks to women that are overwhelmed, defeated. Those are some of the things that you talk about. I hope so. Yes, you do. You definitely. Yeah, I hope so. How would you define the role of Christian women today? Oh, I think, I think it's the same as it always has been biblically. Um, you know, God created us in his image, man and, uh, man and woman. And so biblically, we're made in his image. Um, we're equals. Um, if you look in Genesis, we were created equally. Um, and so we've, we have value. We have just as much value as anyone. And um, however, we do have special giftedness as women. And as women, we are the nurturers. Um, most of us are the ones that set the tone of our home. Most of us are the ones that will um, teach our children, our grandchildren, and, and those that are in the influence of, of our spheres. You know, we are the ones that are going to, to build the next generation, whether that's a, a physical, biological children, or um, you know, nieces, nephews, friends, you know, our task as women is to build the next generation of believers. And so I still think that wherever we are in life, whether we're working inside of the home or outside of the home, um, whether we have children or not, um, we are still involved in being, you know, women of God who are going to influence the next generation. I think fundamentally that's our purpose. Um, you know, whether we work inside the home or not. I so agree. I so agree. Um, you know that uh, the name of, as people can see behind me, Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club. Yeah. We started back in New York, uh, probably 12, 15 years, well, close to 13 years now. 
We started, nice. which is un, unreal for me to think about it. Uh, we started out in the homes of women and we just basically read a book and we would talk about it. And we, of course, we'd always have food. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and from there- I have to franchise that down here. <laughs> <laughs> actually, let me just say that I'm actually, let me just share this. I hadn't planned on it, but since we're bringing this up, God <laughs> reminded me how Yahweh's book club started. Mm -hmm. And starting in June, uh, we're going to, I'm going to be going back to doing a virtual book club on Facebook each month. Yay. And I am going to, it's not just going to be me. Um, there's, we'll have a book each month, but there, I'm going to have a co-facilitator, somebody who's going to facilitate with me each month. Yeah. And so I'm very excited about it. I have a book already planned and the, my best, uh, one of my good friends back in New York, uh, Beth Stripe is going to facilitate it with me. And I don't want to share the name of the book yet, but it is a powerful <laughs> book that we read back in New York when we were starting the book club. And so uh, I'm going to just put that in there. I'll be advertising a little bit more about it down the road. Um, but so Yahweh, I was in the middle of a celebrate recovery training and in the middle of the training, I hear this voice in my head. I want you to start a book club and I want you to name it Yahweh sisterhood book club. It was just like that. There was no, you know, weeks of waiting on what God was speaking to me. It just came. And so I was like, okay. And so I started it. And so Yahweh, um, our scripture is Proverbs 31, 25. She is clothed in strength and dignity. She can laugh without fear of the future. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about the name Yahweh. I will. Um, okay. So Yahweh, we know, is spelled um, Y-H-W-H. That's how we usually see it um, as the, the four-letter word. Right. And um if you look at the imagery behind those letters and think about, you know, when, when that was used. So the first time we know of it is it's usually considered the I am, I am statement of God. And so when, when God introduced himself to mankind, he called himself Yahweh. Well, if you look at the imagery, even within that word, he introduced his plan of salvation. So here's an example. Um, the Y is the letter Yud and the Yud is a hand it's usually a fist, um, and it means ownership and authority, okay? The H is hey, the letter hey, and it's a window, but it also um, con it has the connotation of behold, because, you know, when we look out a window, we can behold the earth, we can behold the creation of God. Um, w is vav, and it is a nail, um, you know, a big nail and H is behold. And so if you, um, if you look at the letters in an across, as an acrostic of his name, you would see the imagery of hand, behold, nail, behold. And so even when he introduces himself as Yahweh, um, he has the plan of salvation out there. And I know that this is the part you like. Yahweh is a word that you can say without um, any throat sound. Um, it is the very breath that we speak. And if you think about the word hey, which is window or behold, you know, we know that God is out there and moving because we can often see the wind moving through the trees. And so hey often represents the breath of God or the spirit of God. And so if you think about it, if you say Yahweh without any sound, you would say and, and all that is, is taking a deep breath. And so every breath we breathe speaks the very name of God and, and all of him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, we were saying the name of the Father through the breath of his spirit and the words and the letters represent his son. And so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just by saying, it's wonderful. And you're right. I so loved it because when I read that, I was like, I got up off my chair and I was just jumping around. I was <laughs> because it was like this, it was this great revelation for me. Oh. <laughs> and it's myself doing that throughout the day. No, oh, that's good. It's, you know, it's a really nice, 
it's cal it calms you down. It reset, you know, just mm -hmm. gives you such a peace just to say his name that way and to really think of every breath we take speaks the name of God. And you know, when, when you're in the middle of the anxiety or the crazy or the uncertainty, you know, just take a minute and just breathe his name. And, um, you know, he, he speaks that over us and it's, it's a powerful, powerful thing to think of. I have to tell you that when you're talking about anxiety, um, I, in January had, it's, we're in May. So in January I had shoulder or neck surgery. And in March I had shoulder surgery and I'm in physical therapy right now. And I have to tell you that in the middle of everything else that's going on, I have found that I've been having a little anxiety. Me too. Yeah. And so I'm like doing something and all of a sudden I'm, you know, having this panic attack basically. Right. And, uh, and that's what I do. I, I do that. I say, I, I breathe that Yahweh. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you that it just totally, you know, everything goes, I am back to my normal state and, and I'm saying these things because I know that I'm not the only one. Yeah. There's power in the name. There is power in the name. Oh my yeah. God. I am just like, I tell you, I could just jump around right now. It was <laughs> like the greatest. I, I'm telling you that, you know, there's sometimes in your life when, you know, like when God spoke Yahweh to me, you know, 12, 13 years ago, I had no idea what he was looking to do with it. I just thought it would be a little book club, you know, right. in the homes and what God is doing now. I'm just amazed at what he's doing. And, and so, so the, those moments, like when I read that, what you had written in the book, mm -hmm. I mean, I would, I would, I believe me, I bought a copies, a couple of copies of these books and I've had them shipped to some people. Yay. And I'm so excited about this book. So I encourage you, let me just show it again. Mm -hmm. of a woman, why you are Proverbs 31. I encourage you to, there you go. I encourage you to get a copy and also get a copy and share it with a friend because it is just, it's, it's life changing. It really is. And you're learning about, you know, words in Hebrew and you're also learning. I love all the stories that you put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a lot of them, you know what we could, I can relate to myself personally. Yeah. I've, I've talked to, to a lot of ladies and you know, some of those stories are really, really hard. You know, thank God I have not lost my husband yet. Um, but even when reading and writing those stories, there's something about every part of those stories I can relate to. Yep. Um, more than once, the ladies talk about, you know, they say this Jesus, you know, they, some of them came from very godly homes and, and very nice upbringings, but they didn't know this Jesus personally. Um, they've never had to depend on the strength of Christ. Um, you know, we, we go through so much as women. We have just faced so much. And when you know those um, Hebrew letters and the imagery, it really helps us um, understand truly this Jesus and depending on his strength through all of it. It's the only way we can get through this. If, if that is not the truth, I have to tell you, I was watching um, a video on Mother's Day of uh, somebody singing and holding their newborn baby. Mm -hmm. And I was almost in tears because I was thinking at the moment, I wish I knew Jesus when my kids were that young. Oh yeah. And I didn't raise them up in the Lord. You know, they are, you know, all older now and have children, uh, wonderful mm -hmm. children. I, you know, I love them. Um, some are saved. Uh, but I'm, I love this so much that we get to talk about the things that we do. I'm Italian. You can see my hands going. <laughs> that, we, <laughs> that we talk about the things that we do because my heart is to see us set free from the things that have held us captive for so That's long. Right. I know in my own life, you know, the things that held me back. And so um, maybe you could just talk a little bit about how this is, I, I, you've touched base a little bit on it, but how this is not the problem 31. It's not just for someone who's married, you know, they're single, there's divorce, there's barren women, there's, you know, uh, women who have had abortions, you know, and I will tell you that I am one of those women right. years ago. Right. Um, I'm going to be doing a video next month on this subject. Right. Um, so I mean, you, you've hit almost everyone. I, um, I have 
one woman, and so the story that you mentioned, actually, when she told me her story, I, I was, I couldn't make this stuff up. <laughs> I just, her story, um, you know, she was saying that um, she came from a background of abuse, and the man that she married, actually, she thought was a good Christian man. However, he held the Proverbs 31 passage over her, mm -hmm. and he said, you will never be this kind of woman. And after she finally escaped and divorced him, um, she did end up getting an, an abortion, um, you know, in that interim when she was single. And when she started dating another man, um, she finally came to the point where she, she said, I have to tell him, he has to know what he's getting, you know, with this. And she confessed, you know, this abortion to him. And he said, you know, I have been looking for a woman just like you. I want to show you something. And he pulls out the Proverbs 31 package, um, passage, and it's got highlights all throughout. And he says, you know, as I have dated you, I've seen this in you, and I've highlighted these different aspects of Proverbs 31, and you, you truly are this woman. And I, I couldn't make that up. <laughs> I was just in awe. And she has since, um, she is an abortion advocate of, you know, of my plant, you know, helping women get through that process and just understanding how precious they still are and how, you know, worthy um, they still are. I have another story of a woman who was conceived in rape mm -hmm. and um, her mom didn't abort her. And, you know, by society standards, maybe, you know, they want to um, justify that she had that right. And she's an incredible, um, she's a pastor's wife and they have an incredible ministry. They've been missionaries and, um, you know, she's used and she has, a, she had a very rough upbringing. You know, she, it's not something we would consider as a pastor's wife. Um, you know, we just have some incredibly strong stories. I have two ladies who lost their husbands very young and you know what, even though they're beyond that in um, time, it's still a very raw emotion. In, you know, I spoke with one right after Mother's Day, and she still has that hard time. Um, you know, so there's no time limit on grief. And, you know, the, Jesus still, the, the Lord still wants us and still wants to use us. And, you know, I say in the book, we look at ourselves and we think of um, scars and flaws and, um, you know, problems that, you know, we etched across our bodies. We see things that are flaws and scars and, and things that we should probably not be um, proud of. You know, shame is such an important thing in society for women today. But you know what? God looks through all of that and he, he looks at that as experience that he can use somewhere. Um, you know, I might have dealt with a really hard situation, but that's something that another woman can absolutely relate to. And so what I perceive as a scar, he is going to perceive as experience that can be used to minister to somebody else. And so um, it's just a different book. It, it's, um, it's funny when you do a proposal for um, publishers, when you submit to a publisher, you have to talk about other books that are out that are just like your book, you know, and what, what is the competition doing? And I told my agent, I said, I don't want to sound cocky, but there's not another book out there like this. <laughs> um, there's not. And so, I, you know, I talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, the other books that are out there and, I, and they're good. They're, they absolutely can, you can take something from them and there's a lesson in all of them. But this one's just different, and, and I just really wanted the message to be, um, you know, we're women of strength. If you yoke yourself to Christ, just like the first letter says, um, we can absolutely plow through the hard stuff and be women of strength. That is so true. I so appreciate all of those words. And I know <laughs> that it speaks to, to me personally as well. And oh, good. I a lot of other women that this will speak to. Um, before. I'm going to ask you to pray uh, at the end, okay. um, but I really, I don't do this all the time, but I really just feel that there is a um, part of a song that um, the Lord's put on my heart. So I'm just going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> so before the world began, 
you were on his mind and every tear you've cried is precious in his eyes because of his great love he gave his only son and everything was done so you would come nothing that you've done could make him love you more and nothing that you said could make him close the door because of his great love he gave his only son and everything was done so you would come come to the father though your gifts are small broken hearts broken lives he will take them all the power of the world the power of his blood everything was done so you would come everything was done so you would come amen so there are women who don't know jesus Mm -hmm. There are women who feel broken and not worthy of having Jesus love them. And whatever the situations may be, I just believe that God wants to do something right now. Amen. Amen. So, um, so if you want to pray. I will. Thank you. Father God, just pause a moment. Let's just say his name. Oh, Father God. From the beginning of time, you knew each one of us, you knew our stories, you knew our lives and our struggles, and yet you sent your son so that we could still come into your presence and like a king on the throne, you would lift up our face and you would allow us to gaze into your wonder. Father, thank you. Lord, I know that there are women who are going to listen to this that just feel like they have been disqualified and that they are dealing with the incredible hard things of life. And Lord, remind them. Lord, I don't care if it's through this book or through a friend or through your powerful Holy Spirit, but remind them that they are incredible worth in your eyes and they are worth pursuing and seeking. And God, you paid an incredible bride price for them. You shed your round, rich drops of blood when you paid that bride price for these women who are worth far more than the jewels. Lord, I pray that the women who read this book and who encounter this story and, and listen to this video know this Jesus and know how much you value them. And Lord, thank you. We just thank you and praise you for your sovereignty and just your intimate knowledge of us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lauren, thank you so much. I have so enjoyed spending time with you. I just want to show your book one more time. <laughs> you need to buy this book and <laughs> I encourage you to not only get a copy for yourself, but to send a copy to a friend uh, that God would place on your heart. Um, it will really bless them. Um, thank you again. Blessings to you and your family. Please say hi to your mom for me. I will. Okay. And um, God bless you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club. Uh, we post these on our Facebook page.